Hello, and thank you for joining me on this special journey beneath the surface of my favorite lake. In this video, rather than focusing on a single species like I have in the past, I'll be looking at the lake's ecosystem as a whole, with a special emphasis on how all lakes and ponds change over time. And hopefully the knowledge that you gain from this video will give you a greater understanding and appreciation for how lakes and ponds are constantly evolving so that the next time you look at a lake, you'll see it in a completely different light. And as you watch this video, it's important to keep in mind that many of the changes that occur in a natural body of water, such as a lake or a pond, can also apply to the little ecosystem that we call an aquarium. It's a little known fact that all lakes and ponds are born, they age, and then they die through a gradual process known as aquatic succession. The birth of a lake or a pond can occur in many different ways. In the northeastern part of the U.S., where I live, there are many lakes that were formed by receding glaciers, which left large depressions in the earth that subsequently filled with water. And, depending on their size, these bodies of standing water are known as kettle lakes or kettle ponds. Some lakes are formed by landslides that sends debris down into a valley where it then blocks a river and forms a lake. Lakes and ponds can also be created by the building of dams, either by humans or by busy little beavers. And there are a multitude of other ways that a lake can form which are beyond the scope of this video. The important point is that all lakes and ponds go through a natural and fairly predictable process of aging that eventually changes the body of water into something else. In other words, all lakes and ponds have an expiration date. So now the question becomes what causes these standing bodies of water to change, grow old, and eventually die? Well, this aging process is set into motion by the accumulation of nutrients and organic matter that enters the lake from the surrounding landscape. Streams feeding the lake carry with them nitrates from animal wastes and fertilizers that leach into the water from nearby farms, as well as phosphates from eroding inorganic material such as rocks and sand. Rain also washes soil and debris from the upland areas into the lake where it eventually settles on the lake bed. Furthermore, aquatic plants and animals grow and die where they then settle to the bottom of the lake, and over the course of many years, these additions to the lake bed cause the body of water to become more and more shallow over time. And as this layer of sediment builds up, it creates additional areas of the lake bed that are exposed to the sun, and it's in these shallow, sunlit areas where submersed vegetation can grow. The buildup of sediment in the lake increases exponentially as more and more plants are able to grow and multiply in the relatively shallow, sunlit waters near shore. And as the lake slowly fills with sediment and plants, the areas of deep open water slowly begin to disappear as the lake becomes increasingly shallow. This shallow area near the shore is known as the littoral zone, and it's the most productive part of the lake in terms of the number of species that live and breed there. In New England, where I live, the leaves grow, change color, and then die every year, falling into the lake and then sinking to the bottom. In some areas of this lake, the lake bed is covered with a loose layer of decomposing leaves that's about two to three feet thick. These leaves are broken down by all sorts of tiny invertebrates that then serve as an important food source for everything else in the lake. Large trees on the shoreline fall into the lake and further add to the buildup of the lake bed, and slowly but surely the lake becomes increasingly shallow as it transitions from one type of ecosystem into another. This process of aging is divided into what are known as trophic stages, and there are three of them.
the oligotrophic stage, the mesotrophic stage, and the eutrophic stage. In the oligotrophic stage, the lake water is clear because there's very little organic matter or sediment built up on the bottom of the lake. And, due to the minimal amount of organic matter, there's very little biological activity. Oligotrophic lakes are usually deep with a shoreline that's only sparsely populated with aquatic plants. Newly formed lakes and ponds are oligotrophic. However, there are some really old lakes such as the Great Lakes in North America and Lake Baikal in Russia that are still in the oligotrophic stage due to their large size and very deep water. Nonetheless, during the early oligotrophic stage, pioneer species such as phytoplankton, zooplankton, and bacteria begin to colonize the water. As the number of nutrients in the lake increases, so does the number of organisms that the lake can support. And, over time, the lake moves from the oligotrophic stage into what's known as the mesotrophic stage. At this middle age stage of development, there are ample areas of shallow water with a thick layer of sediment that supports a wide variety of aquatic plants. As these plants grow and die in the shallow sunlit waters near shore, the number of nutrients in the lake increases, thus supporting an even greater variety and abundance of aquatic plants and animals. And with an increased availability of food, all of these organisms will grow at an accelerated pace. This increased growth rate further adds to the buildup of a thick layer of sediment on the bottom of the lake. And the water now has an ample supply of nitrates and phosphates to fuel the growth of an even greater number of plant species. This particular lake is in the mesotrophic stage and slowly moving towards the final stage of its development, which is known as the eutrophic stage. Eutrophic lakes and ponds are very rich in nutrients with lots of biological productivity. These old lakes also have high concentrations of phosphorus, nitrates, and chlorophyll. The water clarity is usually poor due to the abundance of suspended organic matter. And due to the tannins released from the buildup of decaying leaves and woody debris on the substrate, the water can have a color that looks like tea. Eutrophic bodies of water are typically very shallow, muddy, and contain an abundance of aquatic plants. And with so many available nutrients, plants and algae thrive and can grow to such an extent that they become a nuisance. In eutrophic bodies of water, it is not uncommon to have algal blooms in the summer, and then, when these algal blooms die, the decomposition of the dead algae by bacteria can use up most of the dissolved oxygen in the water, which can then kill large numbers of fish. With such a rapid growth and decomposition of organic matter in the lake, the sediment layer accumulates rapidly, the lake becomes shallower, and submerged plant growth begins to spread out across the shallow, sunlit areas of the lake as well as across the surface of the water. At first, both submersed and emergent plants coexist, but over time the body of water becomes too shallow to support submerged vegetation. The submerged plants are then gradually replaced by emergent vegetation, such as cattails, sedges, bulrush, sphagnum moss, and common reeds, such as phragmites. These plants will then continue to grow and spread out across the lake, filling in the last remaining areas of open water, which can change the ecosystem from a lake or a pond to a wetland environment, such as a swamp, a marsh, a bog, or a fen, depending on the environment in which the body of water is contained. In fact, many marshes and swamps are just old lakes and ponds that have reached the end of their life. 
Nonetheless, the newly formed wetland will continue to fill in the open spaces that once held water until the entire ecosystem transitions to dry land, or in some cases, to a wet meadow. And, given the proper conditions, trees will begin to grow, and what was once a lake will eventually become a forest. The speed at which a lake ages depends on the size of the lake and the amount of nutrients and sediment being put in or taken out of the lake. Some bodies of water, such as Lake Michigan in North America, are still in the oligotrophic stage despite being several thousand years old. However, given enough time, even large lakes can eventually fill in with sediment and be converted into a completely different type of ecosystem. Furthermore, human activities can speed up the aging process by introducing invasive aquatic plants or by allowing nutrient-rich runoff from nearby farms and leaking septic systems to enter the lake. Clear-cutting vegetation around the lake can also increase the erosion of the upland areas in the watershed, which will then increase the amount of organic matter running into the lake. The waves from motorboats and jet skis can also speed up erosion of the lake shoreline, which can eventually cause large trees at the water's edge to lose their footing and fall into the lake. While these submerged trees provide an excellent habitat for a wide variety of animals, they also add to the overall buildup of the lake's sediment layer, which, over the course of many generations, shortens the life of the lake. Nonetheless, the transition of the lake from one trophic stage to another is a very slow process, but it's also a perfectly natural and inevitable part of an evolving aquatic ecosystem. And unless humans intervene, nearly every lake and every pond will eventually fill in with sediment until the standing water is gone. Eutrophic lakes are sometimes treated with herbicides to kill the growth of aquatic plants, and the plants can be removed mechanically by a process known as hydro-raking. Lakes can also be dredged with heavy equipment to remove sediment from the lake in an attempt to bring it back to a younger, less nutrient-heavy oligotrophic stage. And given enough time, poor planning, and neglect, your planted tank will eventually turn into a swamp, just like an old lake. Just don't trim the plants, don't do water changes, don't vacuum the aquarium substrate, and eventually your fish tank might look like this. Yes, the tiny ecosystems that we call aquariums do change as time goes on. Our aquatic plants grow and die, and a thick layer of sediment builds up on the substrate. The water becomes more acidic as the tank ages, and if we don't remove the dead organic matter, the nutrient levels will increase just like they do in a lake or in a pond. This buildup of organic material can cause a problem in the aquarium known as old tank syndrome, but that's a subject for a different video. And now that you know how lakes and ponds are slowly evolving from one type of ecosystem into another, I hope that it gives you a greater appreciation for how all life is slowly but constantly changing to become something new. Because nothing lasts forever, and take that as a gentle reminder to live each day as if it were your last.